Hey YouTube. <coughs> so I want to talk about something called plastic gauge. Um, if you can see it there, Oop, there it is, plastic gauge. All this is is looks like a piece of paper about 12 inches long and an inch wide, and inside of this paper is a piece of plastic that big. It's the length of the paper. Probably. <coughs> In all honesty, I would imagine that this thing probably costs a nickel. I wouldn't be surprised if I paid ten bucks for it, but I don't know for sure. But anyway, what you do with this is you take a little piece of it, you break a little piece of the plastic off, it breaks off pretty easily, and you can open this up if you want to, to be able to get at it. Or sometimes what I'll do is I'll just take <coughs> and just tear it off, you know, and then I'll have the piece that I need something like this size, like that, and uh, the plastic would be inside, which I've already put it on the journal, and I'll show you how you use this. Plastic gauge is a unique thing. It's, it, 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 the plastic is made at a certain size so that when it's squeezed, the gauge that's on here, I don't know if you can see that real well, but that gauge, come on, let's see your focus on this. Um, is in thousandths of an inch there. So that means that for every one of these little marks, like, you know, it's the same, this red, white, red, whatever, the, the biggest red there is two thousandths, the white is three thousandths. And what you do is you put it on the journal. Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit there. There you go. You can see it there. <clears throat> you put this plastic gauge on the journal, you know, you want to wipe the journal clean, and you wipe the connecting rod clean. You put the bearings back into the rod, that's why I save them for each uh, uh, rod and keep them in the proper rod that they came with, you know, that they came out of. And you lay that plastic gauge on there, and you bring the rod uh, back onto the crankshaft gently, so you don't scratch nothing and you tighten up on it. And what it does is it compresses that um, plas plastic. Let's see if I can move the camera to get a better... No matter how I look at this, the light is on it. <coughs> if I put it like that, it'll... You can sort of see it there. Yeah, that's a little better. Okay, so then what you do is you hold the gauge against that. Now, <coughs> you can see that this thing is narrow here and it's a little wider up there. What they recommend is that you measure the widest point. And if you think about it, when you compress the plastic, the wider point would indicate the lesser clearance. And when you put the bearings on, the new bearings, you want to set them up in such a way that you're working with the lesser number. If you work with this number, and let's just see what that is there, uh, that's about uh, three thousandths. So that means there's three thousandths clearance in the bearing. If you measure the bigger one at the widest point, there's two thousandths of clearance in the bearing. So that's a thousandths of an inch that you need to consider. So you'll want to work with the uh, smaller number to re to rebearing this, to put new bearings in. So I may get an undersized bearing that's one thousandths undersized and that'll bring the, clo the, uh, the closest tolerance down from two thousandths to one thousandths. Okay? I'm hoping you can see that. So anyway, that's how you would do that. And you do it to every single one. You can also do it to the main bearings. Now when you put this in there, you do not rotate this thing. Let's see if I can just... Yeah, you don't rotate it. All you do is, you know, keep the crankshaft still. You'll find that this stuff easily falls off, so you want to put it right on the top there of the journal so that it doesn't fall off so easily. <coughs> so you cut a piece of plastic, put it on there, tighten the journal back up, and do your measuring at the widest point. And like I say, that widest point is right there, which is 2,000.
Now they make this in a bunch of different colors. You can get it in uh, green, which is for bigger, uh, uh, bigger uh, clearances. I, I I'm not positive of this. Don't hold me to it. But I think the green is for bigger, and then there's a yellow for smaller. So I usually keep three different type in, you know, in stock so that I have them. But that's all there is to to uh, using this and measuring it. But it really gives you a good, you know, idea of what's going on. Now you can also do a little bit of um, you know probing so you don't only have to test it in one spot you can maybe turn the crank a little bit with the piston hook you know before you hook the uh, piston up to it and do it in another spot like maybe over here somewhere you know you got and when I'm say turning it I'm talking about turning it ahead of time then you know rehook it up but this will give you a good indication of what is going on you can all you got to do it to every rod, so I would have to put another piece on the next part of the journal to make sure that that um, is following through as well. So, in other words, I'm talking about this next one here, and then, like I say, you just measure that. That's all it is. There's nothing to it. <coughs> the confusing part about working with bearings is that you end up with something called a uh, undersize. A lot of guys would think well if the bearing is um, you know loose doesn't that mean you need a thicker bearing and yes that does mean that but it's still called undersized one thousandth undersized two thousandth undersized because what's happening is you're actually the thicker the bearing the smaller the hole right so in other words, you got two something here, I think 2.09 or whatever. As you put a thicker bearing in there, that hole gets smaller. That's why it's called an undersize. Now with that, I want to tell you about something else that happened here over the weekend, and I wasn't certain about this. And this was what happens, guys, when you don't read instructions. <clears throat> I was down at Walmart the other day. I picked up some engine degreaser, because I'm going to degrease this engine by hand. At the most, I might put the parts... Uh, power washer outside and, and rinse it off but I'm going to do it by hand that way I can contain the, the dirt better so anyway I bought some stuff WD-40 this, this is a new product in my eyes I haven't seen it before it works pretty nice I was surprised it works on all kinds of materials this engine degreaser from Walmart is more or less a generic stuff you got to do a little, little bit of uh, scraping if you want it to work but I'll tell you, while I was down there I found at Walmart, I found this stuff. Zep Commercial Industrial Purple Cleaner Degreaser Concentrate. Let me tell you something. This stuff is unbelievable. I mean, it really takes the dirt off. If you look at the connecting rods, that's a connecting rod that I cleaned with it. That's one that hasn't been cleaned yet. This one's been cleaned with it. I mean, look how nice that is. However, let me tell you what I did. I made the mistake of dumping this into a Maxwell House can. You can see the can over there. And I, um, what I did was I put enough in here that I could dip a piston in it. Well, I didn't dip this one in. This one I basically used my parts washer to clean except for this metal part. I, I dumped that in. But when I did this one, look what happened to this piston. This piston now I can't use because it took the coating, it ate the coating right off the piston. We're not talking, that's what you're looking at there is not dirt. What you're looking at there is actually oxidized aluminum. It took the coating right off of it, it ate it off. And what I'm saying about reading, lo and behold, if you read the back of the thing here, I don't know if I can get that into cue there but what it says is not for use on painted surfaces aluminum brass chrome copper marble slate and so on and so forth it's great on steel okay on steel you can't beat it but when it comes to uh, aluminum be very careful what you use on these pistons because that one is going to have to be replaced no matter what now so now because of my not reading the instructions on this stuff, I now have to buy another piston. I'm not sure of the price of them. I wouldn't be surprised if they're between 30 and 50 bucks for one. 
But anyway, you can see how nicely the um, push rods came out from dipping them in that stuff. It really came out nice. And I also <coughs> have the oil pump. I'll show that to you how that came out. Uh, the oil pump here I dipped in and it came out you know this is without brushing it wiping it or anything just dipping it in there and it was corroded something fierce look at that metal it's perfectly clean so you know now right there probably needs a little bit of brushing but I was amazed at how well it cleaned that up the rod for the oil pump cleaned that sucker right up so it's some good stuff but you want to be careful with it here's the uh, green let's see the green clearances go from uh, that's millimeters I like good old US inches from one thousandths to three thousandths the red goes from fish, uh, where are we at here from two thousandths to six thousandths so and what you might want to do is you might want to check to try the different colors sometimes the different colors work pretty nice as well and I had mentioned in my first video that one of the most important things and you know guys I, I, I there's a lot of important things and sometimes when I'm making a video I forget that I've said that but really you need some good tools I bought this set of micrometers <coughs> what happened my son had a uh, 2000 Ford Ranger with a 3.0 in it and uh, shaft on the uh, oil pump to the between the distributor and the oil pump had broken off while he was doing 60 miles an hour down the throughway and the motor uh, stopped it didn't seize up but it stopped it lost all oil pressure so I bought this when I rebuilt that engine because I had to measure every single thing and what's nice about this is you're, you got from zero to one inch and the biggest one here is five to six inches so there isn't anything on that motor piston included that I can't measure and also with that you get these uh, um, I don't know what they would call these but they're actual sizes you know to test the micrometer in case you have to adjust it to make sure it's accurate so that's something that you want to hang on to or purchase or rent I mean I bought these because at, tra at Grizzly they were having a sale and they really they're not that bad I mean they're not starrett but from what I'm seeing they've been able to measure everything I've needed measured I also bought some of these telescoping uh, gauges here for doing interior stuff and if you look at this again the smallest is five sixteenths to a half and then the biggest one there will go up to six inches so again this can measure anything that you know is up to six inches in, in diameter on an interior uh, surface so that the micrometers and plastic gauge is what you're going to need to be able to get going you know starting up with this now you can use things like feeler gauges and I'm sure <clears throat> that if you're watching the video you know what feeler gauges are if you don't um, let me just see if I have some here they don't use them a lot since they took points out of motors but uh, who the heck are they I don't even see them oh here yeah so feeler gauges are just a set of different excuse my camera here for a second they're just a set of you know metal pieces that have been ground or cut or however they're formed to different things this is like two thousandths of, of an inch for instance and then they go all the way up to looks like twenty five thousandths and then you can combine them and stuff it's in a little handy thing like a knife I don't know if I got all that in the camera there I hope so alright so anyway that's what a feeler gauge would look like that's something you may want to invest in also because you can use the feeler gauge to measure different things on the motor so yeah that's all there is to it as far as measuring the uh, crank goes and you have to do that to every journal you want to do that you know make sure of what the clearances are and this way here you, you'll uh, be able to 
get everything to work or have the knowledge to know what to do with those with the bearings now as far as measuring other stuff when I get a chance I'll get to the rest of that okay guys so have a good one thanks for watching bye